Hi everyone, welcome to another Hatton's video and we have a special guest today. We have Jenny Kirk with us and we'll be talking about some of our new models that have been brought to the market as well as some of the changes that have happened in the model railway industry over the last few years. Right, so Dave, tell me a little bit about yourself. How did you come to be here at Hatton's? Well, I've always been a modeler ever since I was sort of in short trousers, so to speak. And I've been a, just coming up to six years now oh, and right. come up to be the, the buyer for the company, really, as mm. well as featuring some of the YouTube videos and such like. And it's, it's a great place to work, but also a really great hobby to be involved yeah. in. There's so much passion and so much brilliant products available at the moment. And it's... It's just great to speak to people about them as well, really. So there's a there's a lot of knowledge and a lot of a lot of fun to to right. discuss. Brilliant. I mean, do you find there's a, one of the little risks of working in a model railway environment and being a modeler as well? Do you spend an awful lot of money here? <laughs> a, a, a lot of money here, <laughs> mainly. Yeah, I think they've plugged my pay packet straight into the till in the store now, <laughs> so it, it works out. But it it really does sort of it carries across for me as well. I've got my own layout at home, and you've you've got a few as well, haven't you? Yeah, I I find a lot of enjoyment in building layouts. Yes. So I'm just at the moment finishing off another layout. I've converted my loft. And I built uh, Weir Yard, which is kind of a homage to right. Tyne Yard. But prior to that, I built uh, Bolton Trinity Street Station in my shed. I uh, built Garden Railways. Um, and even going right back, um, I built a small industrial sized uh, layouts, things like Trafford Park and um, all sorts of fictional layouts as well. Yeah. I just love building layouts. A lot of our customers, well, including yourself, really, are very, very similar there. Either starting with a smaller layout mm. or going for a great project. So it's, it's fantastic to be sat next to someone who's got a lot of layout stories to tell, so to speak. Yeah, definitely. So, so brilliant to have you here. Thank you, thank you for having me. So anyway, we're here at Hatton's and it really wouldn't be a trip to Hatton's without asking the people in the know <laughs> what's hot this year. Come on, tell me, what's the inside 2019, track? wow, well, yeah. I mean, where do you start, to be honest with you? There's so much coming through in so it many is, different yeah. scales as well. I mean, we've had the Hornby and various other announcements at the start of mm. the year. There's the Princess Royal coming through. Yeah. Various other big 00 scale locomotives that are just starting to come into, into sales now as well. We've just had the bullied coaches. Yeah. And they have gone absolutely hot off the press as well. Just can't keep them on the shelves at the yeah, moment, yeah. really. So, and a, a fantastic model. But it's such a good year for modelers. Yeah. It, what, whatever scale you are and whatever you model, whatever sort of area you model, whether you're into the sort of pre-grouping steam or whether you mm. go right through to the modern day. I mean, the Class 800, the IEP, yeah. is just coming through now that's um, i mean lnr and gwr livery so that really is up to this second almost yeah, in, yeah. in modeling terms but just so much stuff coming through it's hard yeah. to uh, hard to know where to start and the other thing as well i've noticed that there's a lot of products which uh, the likes of hornby are announcing that they're, they're, people are getting so excited by it's not yes. just one product there's there's product after product i mean i'm thinking about the rustin hornsby 48 ds yes. with the shunters match wagon i mean we, you know we've talked about the big things but let's talk about the little things i mean yeah. they seem to have really garnered a lot of interest absolutely and it's that sort of niche market now mm. that's really picking up and i mean we had a look at the samples of those at one of the shows recently, and they're mm. only about two inches long I know, as well. I know, they're tiny, tiny but little they, things. But they still pack a motor in there. You've got a four-pin digital socket. You know, all, all the things you need are still yeah. fitting into a model of that size. And even the same coming into the N-Gage market, we've just had the 68s in, in the Trans-Pennine liveries mm. from Dapol. We've got a few other locomotives coming through there. We're producing our own Hatton's original Garrett in N-Gage as well. So for N-Gage modellers, that variety and scope for modelling is coming through just as much. Yeah, I mean, I must admit the N-Gage now is just so incredible when you see it. I mean, I remember when I first started out modelling, um, when I first started out modelling, the end gauge was almost like toys. It was so crude, and it's, yet now it, it is such amazing quality. It's really caught up with yeah. double O. I mean, across the scales now, we're not really talking about toy trains anymore. It is model miniature locomotives almost. Yeah. You know, some of the detail that's available in all the scales. I mean, 
Even in O-Gage as well, the O-Gage market has a lot more new locomotives. We've just had Helgen's Class 37.4 yeah. come through for the diesel modellers, but we've also had the announcement of another run of Dapol's Jinty locomotives. Yeah. The 14XX Auto Tank yeah, will really be produced later in the year. That's available to mm. pre-order now. And just the sheer variety of 2019 releases, it's, it's going to be a year to remember. Yeah, it, well, certainly I think my bank balance is going to remember <laughs> this year. And, you know, sometimes you think maybe we've just never had it so good because, you know, I'm, I'm finding myself pre-ordering so much stuff. And I'm thinking, oh, God, I hope it doesn't all come through certainly, on the same but day. One thing I've really found interesting is over the last few years, but certainly in 2019, mm. is it's not just the new releases that are coming through so well. We're selling a lot of track. We're selling a lot of ballast. We're selling a lot of accessories, yeah. trees, signals, you name name it it's selling just as much which to and me that that i mean that is great news because that absolutely. means that people are building new layouts and maybe even new people into the hobby getting started which is really what this hobby certainly needs. modelers are modeling yes. and that is the best news you can have really as yeah. much as a new locomotive is an exciting new addition to any collection mm. at the end of the day if you've got a layout to put it on if you're building an ambitious new project be it yeah. a small yard as you mentioned before or a brand new mainline station people are creating new layouts and new projects, which is, it's music to my ears. Yeah, I mean, it's the lifeblood of the hobby. We need the new people coming in and getting this interest from an early age to keep the hobby alive. And it looks like we're getting that. Absolutely. Brilliant. So Dave, you've been here for six years. Yes. You've been a modeler for 20 plus years. <laughs> how, how much have you seen change in that time? A lot actually, and it's mainly really positive as well. Mm. There's so many new markets out there now as well. There's different scales and different eras coming through. I mean, you've picked up one of our old yeah, adverts yeah. there from 2001. Yeah, this is, um, and it's in the railway modeler from 2001. And um, it, it makes for some really interesting <laughs> reading. And there's a couple of things that's caught our eyes here, particularly, you know, we've talked about new models coming through in 009 and 0 gauge. And when you look in this advert, look how tiny those sections it's, are. It's less than an inch for both there, which references yeah. what we had at, in 0 gauge and 009 at the time. And the modelers really back then were either 00 or N gauge as, yeah. as represented by our advert. But those of you familiar with our website and the adverts now mm. will see just a sheer amount of available narrow gauge 009 rolling stock. And there's even more to come. Pico have just announced the Festiniog locomotives, yeah. the Small England and the Double Fairly. Yeah, which, really which can be pre-ordered now as well and that's coming through we've had the Helgen, Linton and Barnstable we've had various different coaches from various different railways by Pico as well yeah. and a lot of people are really getting into that narrow gauge modelling scene now and it's, mm. it's great for a small space yes. as well but you can do a larger layout but as you said, for those with a bit more of a passion for a bigger locomotive, really, the, yeah. the O gauge market over the last, well, since we did this advert in 2001, has absolutely exploded. Very much. I mean, what, what actually grabs me from this, that it says new O gauge bargains. <laughs> And it's, it's really just Pico track. And you know, it must have been so difficult to model in O-Gage back then. Well, that's one thing we've kept since 2001. We do have the Pico track at a bargain price, but since yeah. then really, you've really gained a lot of ready to run locomotives. Yeah. Dapol and Helgen along with others are bringing through mm. some great items there. As we mentioned previously, we've just had the O-Gage 37.4 and that complements a huge amount of sort of BR and early privatization yeah. diesels by them. Dapol have brought through the smaller locomotives such as the Pannier tanks, the Ginty, LMS Ginties and the Class 08 shunters yeah. as well. So whereas, especially 20 years ago, but even more so now, in double O and N gauge, you could get something for every range, mm. but not a lot for your O gauge and double O nine no, model. No. It, was, it was very much, if you wanted to have a locomotive, you, you kind of had to build it yourself, but and, now. And the words there themselves, which is, this is all the 009 we have. It was a oh, small yeah. range and that's totally what yeah. it went to. I'm just looking down here, the 009 uh, narrow gauge bargain section, it's about an inch of column <laughs> space. And at the bottom, it always used to say, I remember this from back in the day, I always used to say, this is all the 009 we have. And I have this mental image of Norman Hatton <laughs> on a phone going, I keep telling you, it's all we've got. <laughs> and now the range is just well, so massive. We do a purely O gauge newsletter now as well so you can mm. see how the market is there that goes out every week and 009 we feature on our Facebook page and in our mm. newsletters as well with the sheer amount of and the sheer quality of items coming through 
And one of the main changes as well that you, you really have to remember is the quality of models across all scales coming through has, in my opinion, certainly never been better. Yeah. Really, the, the quality of the locomotives, the fine details that are achievable on models now. I mean, you've got digital coming through with sound capability. Yeah. This is all items that in a 2001 catalogue were space age yeah, and, and I mean, pipe I, dream really i don't it's even think there's um yeah dcc doesn't even exist in this advert i'm just looking through and yeah the, the, there's not even a mention of it i, I don't think in 2001 locomotives think just, even came with a socket it was just about to turn i think mm. locomotives are just about to start getting their first digital rec ready sockets but Especially in my opinion, 2019 in the catalogues at the moment, we, we really are in a golden age of modelling. Yeah. The quality of models coming through, the availability of rolling stock, whether you're a double O gauge modeller, an N gauge modeller, or you're going into O gauge or double mm. O nine, as we've seen here, there's whatever your railway interests, there is a model of high quality available for you. And it's easy to get started now. It's yeah. easier than ever before. We offer things like bundle packs and advice yeah. for starting. I mean, you yourself have done some videos on yeah. how to get started, etc. So, well, the invention of YouTube itself has yeah, happened yeah. since this catalog <laughs> and videos such as this wouldn't and be possible. It. I mean, if you ever got stuck now um, with like, how do I do X? How do I do Y? You can go and look on YouTube and there's a video of somebody showing you how to do it. I mean, back in 2001, if it wasn't in a magazine, you, you were really lost at sea and how to do things. Absolutely. And we've got our own Facebook channel and live chat and emails. And yeah. we've, we've still got the good old traditional telephone if you do need a bit of advice. Yeah. But there's so many ways to get in touch and ask questions, mm. really, and seek that advice out. And one of the other things as well is just touching back on the subject is the sheer variety of items available now. Yeah. I mean, we have two of our own Hatton's Originals sat yeah. in front of us at the moment. We've got the P-Class, which I believe yeah. you've done a, a review of. Yeah, I of. did a review of the South Eastern and Chatham Railway grey one, which um, I think I think we talked about this in the last video I did here. It sold incredibly well and yes. actually sold out. Yes. Are you going to be rerunning that livery? We're looking into more liveries in the future. There's no mm. confirmed plans yet, but we have there's still opportunities to do more liveries yeah. for the peak classes but we yeah. do have a wide range available at the moment but yeah. one thing that that really covers again is the availability of what's called the pre-grouping liveries mm. so your pre-1923 colour schemes and some of the exquisite liveries there that just weren't seen on models 10, 15, 20 years yeah. ago. Yeah, I mean, I'm looking at the, the lining here and the quality yes. of the lining that you're able to get on models now is so much finer than, you know, Back then, the lining would pretty much be one step away from just transfers applied. Certainly. And here we've got so many different passes from the Tampo printing. I mean, do you find that that's actually changed the game in terms of what models are now feasible to do? Ab absolutely, it really is, especially with some more of those intricate liveries that mm. you find in the Victorian and Edwardian eras. It suddenly opened them up to mm. a lot of manufacturers and modelers. And fortunately, a lot of people are really interested in those yeah. areas as well. So it's a real sort of growth area to have yeah. models coming through from that. We find that, I mean, the areas that always have been popular are sort of your big four with your LMS and mm -hmm. LNER coming into your BR steam and then into diesel, the blue air, etc., have always been popular. Yeah. But certainly at each end, either your bang up to date privatization with your class 800 IEP or your pre grouping locomotives right at the other end back in the 1800s and early mm -hmm. 1900s they are real sort of areas that were relatively unheard of mm -hmm. in a 2001 catalog but now are really starting to increase and again that's across the scales that's whether you're a double o gauge modeler mm. whether you're n o or double yeah. o nine as we mentioned or any any other scale actually mm. and some more of the niche items are all in stock coming through as well such as the beel hack snowplow that we've produced again yeah, would have yeah. been completely unheard of or a, or a pipe dream in that sort of yeah. time. I mean, it's one of the products, um, I, I got the chance, you, you lent me one of the yes. Stratford Sharks. I was just amazed at the actual detail level that's on these things. What do you think, you know, this could have been a simple molding for something as niche as this, but you've gone all out with so much detail and attention to detail, even the joggled frames. And when you turn it over, some of the, the detail that really you wouldn't normally see is there reproduced on the model. That's exactly it. And again, the opportunity 
opportunities there to feature some of the really sort of high-end details such as the differences in the solar panels on the mm. front etc is allowed now with a lot more modern technology coming into place with the development of models but also customer support really customer yeah. enthusiasm as we mentioned previously we really are getting to the stage now where we're talking about miniature rolling stock and locomotives rather than model or toy trains so yeah, to speak yeah. it's it's really starting to switch over and in in my opinion i'm all for it more yeah, more yeah, of it yeah. please you know it's Definitely. Um, but I mean, do you find as well, is there still a good market for the more introduction entry level Absolutely. Items? It's never been a better time to get started on the more introductory level. Mm. There's a lot of products there now, as we said before, there's a lot more tutorials and availability of information out there. But the absolute basic core stuff, the, the other end of this, so to speak, really is, is currently available. I mean, mm. we've got starter sets. We have available all the tools you need to get started. Yeah. There's DVDs, starters guides that we sell, there's YouTube tutorials. Yeah. For anyone wanting to get started in the hobby now, this really is the opportunity to just grasp it yeah. and, and really get started. It's, I mean, as, as we've said, really, okay, we're both here in front of the camera, but we are modelers ourselves. So we've, we've already been bitten by the bug, so to yeah. speak. And but I mean, do you find as well that there's so much more great products in terms of the scenery aspect? Yes. Whereas, you know, back in 2001, you know, you're looking at sort of very basic bags of almost like one up from dyed sawdust for doing your ground cover. And now we've got things like static grass. We've Absolutely. got terrain systems, um, stuff for doing solid water all manner of products that actually make making a model railway more accessible than perhaps it ever used to be. We do have a lot of our customers who are really passionate just about the rolling stock and mm. you know that's absolutely fine but again a number of our customers prefer to make the layouts themselves mm. and they're not really too fussed about the rolling stock that runs through them and again it's never been a greater time because your, your standard sort of item, so to speak, the static grass that you mentioned, mm. there's so many different variations in color and quality yeah. and style, etc. You can really make a realistic land scene setup now, yeah. but also some of your more niche items there, there's scenic ranges that are coming through for things like tomato plants, cauliflowers, yeah. etc. So if you want a little allotment on your yeah. layout, we can provide that. And again, the I know it sounds like a corny phrase to make, but the only limit now is your imagination, so yeah, to speak. Yeah. The tools and the quality and the models are there for whatever you want to make at the end of the day, whether you want a small layout, whether yeah. you're starting off, or whether you really want to go to whole hog and make a, a mainline station. Yeah. It's all there and it's all such good quality as well. It is very much so, very much. Okay, so we've talked about all of the things that are new and the changing kind of habits in railway modelling buying, but we're here at Hattons, <laughs> so what's hot at the moment? What would be the top Hattons recommendations for the modeler on a budget? Right this second? Yeah. Right, okay. Oh, he texted me there. I mean, we have <laughs> nearly a thousand bargains on our website at the moment, but I think we've got to pull that down and just show free at the moment. Yeah. So not quite sure you can make a thousand into free, but I'll give it my best <laughs> shot. So the first one we've got at the moment is actually the Oxford Rail Janus locomotive. This oh, is I in know, yeah. double O scale. Mm -hmm. And we've got these for 49.50 at the moment. In That's a really good price actually. It is indeed. And yeah. these are in the allied steel and wire livery. So blue with the chevrons on mm. the front. Really attractive industrial livery there. Yeah. And it, it comes to what we were mentioning before, a lot of the niche products now are coming into the mainstream. So industrial yeah. locomotives are becoming more popular. And this is a fantastic, highly detailed locomotive to start off with. Yeah. For such a such a great price. That is actually, yeah, and it's, it's a good, reliable little runner as well. Absolutely, and mm -hmm. the quality of the detail on there, the handrails and the full cab interior as well, really make it something something special. Really? So it's it's a high quality, full standard model for just under fifty pounds. Brilliant. So what about for the N-Gage modeler? What would you recommend at the moment for somebody who's maybe into bang up to date N-Gage type stuff? Well, that sounds like we've got the thing just for them. We've got the Cato Eurostar. Right, so okay. the train that runs between the UK, France and beyond through the Channel Tunnel since the mid 1990s, I believe. And that's an eight car set that's oh, available. Wow, yeah. So it's, it's pretty much almost so that, a full set. Right. So it, even in N-Gage, it's quite a length really. Mm. And that's 129.50. Right. So that's both power cars and then you get six coaches in the middle. So for that length of train for that price, is, yeah, yeah. it's a pretty rare offer to get that, really. Yeah, yeah. And 
And Kato is a really good manufacturer as well, so a really good it's, reliable mechanism. It is, and it's a very high quality model as well, and you've got your various detailing differences between your different types of coaching there. Right. So for those who are fancying something a little bit international, not just for the UK customer, but also for the continental mm. customer, there's really something there in Engage that's a, a perfect bargain. Brilliant. And um, what about any, anything else? Third item, what would you the, recommend? Ooh, the main thing I'd say then is we were covering before that it's an absolutely fantastic time for starters to get into the hobby. Yeah. There's so much quality product out there at the moment. And what we've done to help with that is put a bundle together. Right, okay, so yeah. you've not only got a Hornby Caledonian train set in there, you've also got a beginner's guide and a DVD with all the top tips in there to help get started and a full station building with platform there as well that snaps together so if you're the new starter really wants to get into it or wants to get back into it after mm. a couple of years there's a locomotive full circle of track carriages station building the guide on how to put it together that is the one thing you need to get started so it's basically an instant model railway in it's an instant model right. railway all you need is a bit of space to put it down, kitchen table or, or board or something like that. So basically, you don't need to worry about have I got everything I need. It's just one package that you can just like set up and go without Abs worrying about what else do I Absolutely. need to do. And you've got a full colour booklet with reference material there mm -hmm. to answer any questions. And we've got a DVD guide in there as well. But as we mentioned before, really, that's also a great opportunity to either get in touch through our Facebook or send us a message, etc., or an email or watch videos on our channel or yours where some of the tutorials are available. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, that if if we've tempted you into getting started again in, in modeling, that really is the one to go for. And there's, there's no better time to do it. Definitely. And I think, you know, it's the lifeblood of the hobby, getting new people into the hobby and, and just nurturing that interest. And, you know, there's been a good upsurge of interest in the hobby, which is only a good Absolutely. thing. Absolutely. And something like that is a great way that, for, for example, a, a relative could buy a complete model railway in a box for a youngster who's shown that interest in railway modeling. And, you know, I'm sure you remember your first ever train set. I do indeed. I still have it. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, that is, that is probably a really good first train set for it, a, a, a youngster coming it's into It's absolutely hobby. perfect. And, I mean, just, again, there is a broad spectrum of bargains available at the moment. So whether you've already got a complete collection that just needs one thing mm. added in, in any scale or whether you're really tempted to get started in a fantastic new hobby, we have a bargain for you, as I mentioned. I think we were yeah. just about hitting a thousand on the website when we yeah. when we came I mean, to film it, this. It's so. one of the things which I always like doing with the Hatton's website is I go straight to the bargain section, and sometimes it can be quite good inspiration to just sort of scan down and see, well, you know, what's within my budget. And quite often it's that the little things I find, some of the, you know, perhaps things like ratio kits or some of the Hornby Scaledale yes. buildings. That, that set you thinking, oh, actually, I could make a nice little diorama or a scene with that. So, you know, you could, it's not just necessarily about the locomotives and rolling stock. That's There's so much more there that can kind of inspire you towards a, a new modelling project. That's certainly it. And with over 20,000 items on our website at the moment, even I sometimes lose <laughs> track of some of the ones we've got available. Yeah, yeah. So it is great to just have a flick through sometimes. And as said, just catch up on what you catch up on what you missed and as I said, yeah. maybe be inspired for a brand new project. Definitely, yeah. So it's been absolutely fantastic to have Jenny here today. It's been great to have such a passionate modeler sat alongside me here. Just wondering if you have any final questions for me whilst, whilst we're here. Um, yeah, well, I think that as we've seen over the last five, 10 years, the, the way the technology has advanced to make things possible that maybe wouldn't have been possible all that time ago. I mean, I can see straight from here in front of us, the, the P class. Yes. Five, ten years ago, this would not have been a prospect because the technology didn't exist to be able to produce this model to this standard with this livery in a commercially viable way. I mean, how would you see maybe in five, ten years' time the hobby um, becoming more feasible in certain areas because of technological advances? I, I can only see the innovations improving and increasing, really. As, as we mentioned previously, the standards of models have been getting better and better since, mm. well, since over the last few years, essentially. And I can only see that improving. The quality of the lining, the detailing and the toolings possible is only going to get better and better as technology improves. One area we've started looking into now is 3D printing. We've mm -hmm. just produced our own figures for the, um, the crews for the Andrew Barclay and the 
P-Class locomotives, and they're of a really high quality as well. They look like they've come straight from a factory rather than a 3D printer. Right. So that's one area. But just over the last few years, there's a heck of a lot of innovations come through in the hobby. And I just think we're going to get more and more for the benefit of modelers, well, including ourselves on that one, really. But there's so many good products about to come through and so mm. many products that we haven't even heard of yet that are going to be very exciting. I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. But one big question is, are we going to run out of things to produce in model Ooh. form? Will, will there be a point where there's just everything has been produced in model I form? I don't think so. There's a heck of a lot of locomotives and rolling stock to produce at the moment. We've seen the advent of new scales coming through. We've seen 009 and O-Gage coming through as well. I think there's a lot more to go at yet, and I'm sure we're going to see some exciting new locomotives coming to market over the next few years. Thank you very much, Dave. It's been great to Not at uh, all. Have Thanks for coming. Time. Yeah, no problem. It's been great to be here, and thanks for inviting Thank me. Thank you. Thanks for watching today's video. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to like it and comment below. And if you want to see more like this and keep in touch with all the latest model railway news, then don't forget to subscribe to our channel.